in Revisionist History, like I said, it's one of my favorite podcasts out there. Um, you open your season with a discussion of self-driving cars, and you and and this is a little weird. And I don't know if you know do you need to be checked out on this, where you try to get a self-driving car to hit somebody. What did you try? What tell me what happened oh, in this episode? First of all, let me just say, bravo. That, <laughs> well, that's a. I read. I, I for some reason I stumbled across this paper, by a guy, who said, he was like a an urban planner. And he writes this brilliant paper where he says, now, wait a minute. If all the cars on the road are self-driving, then that changes the psychological dynamic between cars and pedestrians. The reason you don't jaywalk now, or you jaywalk, we do jaywalk, but we jaywalk pretty sparingly, right? The reason everyone doesn't jaywalk all the time is that we're really worried that someone who's driving a car is either crazy and will hit us, or distracted and will hit us. We know we don't jaywalk all the time because we know that the human drivers of cars are imperfect. Self-driving cars, autonomous vehicles, are they're not absolutely perfect, but they're really close, right? So this guy says, well, if the fear of an imperfect driver is removed, what do you do if you're a pedestrian? You jaywalk all the time. You could walk out into the middle of a freeway you, blindfolded. A hundred percent. And they will all stop. They'll all stop. They will all stop. So I thought this was such a hilarious observation. So, so you need to program in <laughs> some psychopathy. You need some psychopathy <laughs> programmed into that car. You guys, wait a second, wait a second. You guys are absolutely right. Wait, you've jumped ahead of me. Oh, you've sorry, 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 you've sorry, sorry. Wait, we're getting there. Yes, yes, yes. The answer is yes, yes, yes. So right now, so <clears throat> I go to, uh, Phoenix, where Waymo operates, Google's Waymo. And that is the only place in the country where you can hail, like an Uber, you can hail a self-driving car. It'll come pick you up and you drive around. So we got ourselves a Waymo, and we drove around in it for a while. And it, was, it is clear, the, dr the driver, the, 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 the algorithm, the AI that's driving Waymo's is the nicest, kindest, most patient, most long-suffering driver in the history of drivers. This is a driver who never gets angry, who will never flip you the bird, who will never lean on the horn, who will never speed up when he should be slowing down. It's a perfect driver. So then I said, oh. Oh, they actually slow just... down when they're approaching the, a yellow transition oh, between yeah. a, a green and a red. <laughs> never run. They'll never do anything. They're perfect. So yeah. I said, oh, this means that I can do whatever I want. So I got out of the car. We were in a, we were in a parking lot of a Alamo Draft House in Chandler, Arizona. And I got out and I started to mess with the Waymo. <laughs> and I'm not going to I'm not going to give it away. But I was like running next to the Waymo. And I was trying to see whether if I behave like an idiot, what would the Waymo do, right? Now I know what I, what a driver would do, a human driver, if I right. did hit me. But what about what would happen if you know? Um, so it was this great reminder, first of all, that the people who come up with new technologies don't always think through all of the implications. No one thought when they came up with the idea for autonomous vehicles that what they were really doing was liberating pedestrians to do whatever the hell they want. <laughs> that, that, was that wasn't on, their on the mind. table. That, that, that was, was not on their mind. That was they were not like, oh. there. <laughs> and I realized, you know, if you if you make every car in Manhattan self driving, you realize that you'll no car will be able to make it down the street. Right. 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 That's true. Yeah. I mean, it'd be impossible. Yeah. My track club meets on the Lower East Side, and we're all we're competing for space on one little lousy little track with all of the walkers and you know, whatever. If every car on the road was self-driving, we would get on the the FDR drive and do our workouts at rush hour on the FDR drive and every car would stop <laughs> yeah. and wait until we were finished, right? So it's like, right. I found this idea so fantastic. It's like amazing. It makes, it means the really, really, really cool thing is that it means, and the good thing, is it means you, you'll be able to ride your bicycle through any American city without fear. Mm -hmm. right. And that means you will always ride your bicycle, right? The only thing that's preventing us from riding our bicycles everywhere is that we're legitimately scared of getting hit and killed. Right. Now I've removed that possibility. Okay, what so all right, so just, just to be clear, okay? Um, you know, when, as they say, uh, when they invented American football and people were cracking their heads open, 
this is a, a joke from Jerry Seinfeld, right? People, are, not a joke, it's a, it's a comedic observation of reality. Uh, cracking their heads on. So rather than say, maybe we shouldn't play this sport, they said, let's still play the sport, but now wear a helmet, okay? <laughs> so, so maybe you, you just have to add extra rules that constrain pedestrians so that the traffic can continue. And that's a, that's a solvable problem, right? Yeah. It's so I thought you were going to say the, I thought you were going to say what you guys said before. Right. Which is <laughs> maybe the response is you program the AI into being crazy. It's just a little bit crazy. <laughs> just, just a little, so you don't know. Just you a have, that could be the one 90, that doesn't stop at the red light. Yes. Yes. Right. 95% certainty they're not going to hit you. <laughs> right. But that the minute there's five percent, right? Then you're like you're everybody's back thinking to, now. Everybody's, everybody's reconsidering, now. right? I, Malcolm, yeah. let me ask you something. That I don't have an answer to, and I've thought deeply about it. And you're exactly the kind of guy to think about it and write about it. So right now we lose at least thirty thousand people a year to traffic deaths. That includes pedestrians. I think thirty-five thousand a year. So mm -hmm. that's a hundred a day, and that's been that way for decades. Okay. Mm -hmm. You introduce self-driving cars, and that number drops to near zero. But yeah. initially, it won't be near zero. It might be thousands, okay, yeah. of deaths. And these are deaths from errors in the software, right. or the, the 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 pattern recognition software thinks it's a clear road, but there's a truck in the way. That's and actually happened. It, it has actually happened. So, how do you convince people that two thousand deaths are better than thirty-five thousand deaths? If those 2,000 deaths are from the errors of a machine built by somebody in Detroit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, you're right. It requires some persuasion, but I don't think it's framed properly. I don't think it's a difficult proposition for people. I mean, I am 100% in favor of the autonomous driving revolution, even as I recognize it creates a strain, a kind of, an interesting world where you can't actually drive a car in a city anymore, which I'm fine with. Get rid of them as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I do, and also I think the transition, you said eventually we'll get to zero. I think we'll get to zero really quickly because I think these AI systems okay. learn Real really fast. quickly. Mm -hmm. They're fast. I you mean, know what has essentially will, gone to zero? Our airplane deaths. It's essentially yes. zero. Right. They're essentially zero. Yes. And if you, I was talking to the, the engineers at Google, um, who who have created Waymo, and if you will tell, if you ask them, they'll say, you know, just in the last two years, two years, Waymo has gotten like so better. The the experience of driving, of sitting in the back of a of of a Waymo in in um, Arizona, is you can perceive the difference between now and two years ago. Oh wow! The, okay. The car is just driving a lot more. The AI is driving it a lot more smoothly. It's it's there are fewer situations where it seems to be confused. Yeah. It um, I was stunned driving in the back of this way more. It, it, it's amazing. I mean, it's and I think that's the other thing that once people experience the what it feels like to be in these vehicles, what you quickly realize is how much better it is than you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're much less likely, I think, to be concerned about the occasional mistake. Plus, they don't because, consume ethanol. Um. Right, uh, electric. <laughs> yes. right. Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. But the, the other thing, Neil, in your in your in your highball drink. Yes. The other thing right. is the insurance companies are such uh, benefit from this so much that what they'll be able to do is put together and make a fund where you pay people a lot more if they are harmed either either in an accident or if they're killed. We will we'll run you down. Like. There was the the initial accident that happened. Remember, there was a fatality involving an autonomous vehicle yes. in in Arizona, in Phoenix, I think two or three years ago. And it was because a woman <clears throat> crossed, was jaywalking, and she had a bicycle. Right. And what happened is the autonomous vehicle approached, and the AI had a category for bicycle and a category for jaywalker, for human jaywalker, but no category for human and bicycle. And it was confused. It had never seen this before. And it didn't know what to do. And it was going back and forth between, is it a bicycle? Is it a human? Is it a bicycle? Is it a human? And while it was undergoing this this, So that's AI, artificial decision, idiocy, because any yeah, human right. would know that difference, okay? Yeah, <laughs> it hits the woman. Now, the point is, that only happens once, right? That if your system is set up properly, the next time you have a category for that. And that's it's what's like going building on codes. Now. It's like building yeah. codes. Every like code building. in there is because something happened uh, that yeah. where people died for, yeah. for, for construction and fire. 
Um, so, so, so Malcolm. Now I'm wondering you, why right, there's so, a warning to not put my cat in the microwave. <laughs> Somebody did it. Somebody. Uh, all right. So, so I agree. So this would rapidly converge on something being completely safe. So what about the case? You know, the, there are these trolley quest problems, right? In 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 sort of mm -hmm. moral philosophy. So if 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 it goes left, it kills one person. If it goes right, it kills two people. But it will have to kill somebody, so it goes left and kills one person. Is this mm -hmm. the kind of uh, ch decisions it's going to have to make, or or is it going to be so good it never has to have a trolley problem? Well, the it's interesting. The trolley problem. Um, assumes out the possibility the trolley can just stop. Right? Right. So the third, the third strategy is you avoid having to make the decision at all by sacrificing the efficiency of the journey. Mm -hmm. And what I think AI, these, AI, these are called in, in AI parlance, in autonomous driving parlance, these are called corner cases. A corner case is this difficult, tricky to decipher kind of case. And my understanding is that in most of these corner cases, what the car does is it just stops. So got it. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And I that's, think that's it always just, safer. It's it's always safer yeah. to just stop. Right. It will always take the. It will it will do what we're reluctant to do as human drivers, which mm -hmm. is to compromise the efficiency of the journey. The 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 AI will always do that. That's one of its great advantages, by the way. It's never in a hurry, mm. right? Right, I, right, right. Somebody should, I would imagine that if somebody figured out what percentage of fatal accidents happen because someone is in a hurry, it would be an enormous number. They, they, they change the warnings on, on signs. They say traffic and, you know, 20 minute delay, plan for being late. Because yeah. once you plan yeah. for it, then you don't have to rush anymore because now everyone expects you to be late. I mean, it's, it's yeah. a psychological uh, dimension of, the, of the, inf the, the, the helpful sign information on the freeways. Yeah. But so let me ask you, Malcolm, humans are programming these AI and then they sort of continue to program themselves, perhaps. So mm -hmm. what about the uh, the possibility of bias introduced? Mm -hmm. And let me just give a fast example. You, you surely read the news articles uh, in the last year or so where they had uh, racist sinks at airports. <laughs> OK, <laughs> because. <laughs> So you go to the sink and I always wondered, I put my hand there and I said, well, I guess it doesn't work. And then a white person comes behind me and then the water dispenses once they put their hand on me. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. it, it's checking the reflectivity of the skin. If I have dark skin, uh -huh. the signal does not get back to the sensor. It gets absorbed. So it thinks nobody's there, right? right. Yeah. So I always thought it was just- Sorry, a... black man. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're gonna have to have dirty hands. <laughs> dirty <Sorry>. hands. <laughs> so, th so, this, so this made the news, all right? So yeah, I'm yeah. just wondering if I'm a black man crossing the street at night, is the AI going to know I'm there? Or is it going to think, clear street ahead, keep going? And then okay, I, now let me, let me ask that black this. man in the street. Here's, here's the caveat to that, Neil. What? Are you Malcolm Gladwell black? Are you Neil deGrasse Tyson black? <laughs> or are you Miles Davis black? Because guess what? One of y'all is dying. <laughs> you know, this is real. I always tell my girlfriend, who is a lot darker than I am, she's black. I was like, I always tell you, if you, you're out, she's out at night in Manhattan. Like, I was like, you can't wear black. I'm sorry, you cannot wear black. Don't, are you nuts? Like, <laughs> wear a bright color for God's sake. This, <laughs> and she just looks at me like I'm a madman. But I, I, you know, anyone who's driven at night knows when, when, if someone, now this is not just black people, but when some, a person dressed all in black, crosses a street that's badly lit at night it's a problem it's a problem right correct it's a, right. where why do people i my fellow runners we would run it in at night and you know on a, on a winter's night in the, uh, on, a, on the streets and they would be wearing all black outfits and i'm like you're you're crazy what are you doing where are you I always wear a yellow jacket for a reason. I don't want to get killed by some car that can't see me. Right, right. So, so these are humans making that mistake, but when your machine makes the mistake or you don't yeah. know to put in as a programmer to put in some test, or, or if you test it only on white people and think yeah. that it's good for all humans, then this is a, this is a bias. Even if the person themselves, are, are, if they themselves are not racist or, or in any way, they have, it was sort of an unintended consequences of only thinking that white people are who's, uh, uh, you know, you know, it's a great example of this, Neil. I was listening to something on these AI systems, and they were developing an AI system to to um, diagnose um, 
uh, dermat- uh, um, for dermatologists to um, diagnose, uh, to figure out whether something on your skin was cancerous or not. And they went to all this work, and they thought it worked really well. And then they realized that what the AI was doing was looking for the presence of a ruler. Because in all of the images it was using to learn from, <laughs> they were textbook images where there was a little ruler next to the spot to measure how long it was. If there's a ruler, <laughs> it's cancerous, clearly. Oh, my goodness. So like, but, like, but no, but that, I do think that's a transition problem, right? That's the thing about I uh, totally, it is 100% true that AI systems, when you're starting out, uh, reflect the biases of okay, the Okay, we got to kill a few black people first, and then, then yeah. we're, we're on cue, I guess. Right. But <laughs> you don't, but, you know, over time, I think it's reasonable to assume, by the way, here I am on a podcast with Neil Tyson, and I'm the one defending science. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> the one. <laughs> What is going on here? <laughs> what? I, I'm like, guys, no. Scientists know what we're doing. No, you know what it Neil's is? It's, like, it's Chuck. These guys are crazy. It, I can't wash my hands in the airport. <laughs> <laughs> it's Chuck. If I spend too much time around Chuck, I become angry black man. It That's is what? true. <laughs> it is true. I will do that to you. You have, this is, this is, yeah, it's nuts. <laughs>